Hey, this is Dr. Nick with Rhythm Chalk Talk number 10. Uh, I just wanted to get you guys used to reading more difficult tracings. We'll call this intermediate, but it is a 12 lead and it's an interesting rhythm problem. So let's get to it. Looking at the 12 lead, you can notice that there is an irregularity to it, but we talk about regularly irregular or irregularly irregular and I think what you guys should be able to recognize is that there are groups of two there's group beating um, with uh, two beats followed by a pause and two beats followed by a pause uh, if you uh, kinda look at the uh, first beat you can see the P wave is upright in one there's a bit of a first degree AV block in fact um, it's quite a first degree AV block uh, the measures about uh, uh, 280 or 300 milliseconds um, if you take calipers to it and, uh, and if you look at uh, AVF you have an upright P wave here so it it does seem to be a, a sinus mechanism of some kind because the P's are up in one in AVF and when you're looking at the the 12 lead on the whole you can see the voltage is extremely generous you clearly have criteria uh, for LVH with a very deep S wave in V2 and a tall R wave in V6. Um, plus you've got this characteristic strain pattern in the ST segments and the T waves. So you can call it LVH with strain and I think you could probably look at this P wave in V1 and decide this possible left atrial enlargement because you've got you know a fairly hefty negative deflection at the end that's one box wide and one box deep. But the hardest part is figuring out the rhythm. And if you look at the PR interval of this second beat, it clearly looks like it's getting long, right? Well, where exactly is the P wave, though? I just want you guys to um, be clear about it because uh, remember, P waves kind of uh, give you um, a very sharp deflection because they have high frequency signals. And when you look at this T wave, you see it's nice and smooth. And when you look at the T wave of this beat, you can see there's a there's a very large bump right here at the tail end of the T wave. So I would say this is the start of the P wave in this beat, and the PR clearly gets longer compared with this PR interval. Yes, you can take calipers uh, if you don't trust me, but my eyes are looking at this and say this is um, geez almost uh, 360 milliseconds, very long. So okay, you got group beating, you've got pauses. Uh, you've got PRs that are getting longer. So what do you think? This is um, probably type, what would it be? Type 1 or 2. Type 1, uh, second degree AV block. Well, if you said that, uh, you are wrong. Nope. Uh-uh. Fooled you. Okay, so, so why not? Why isn't this type 1, second degree AV block? Clearly... Um, the P is getting longer. You've got group beating. Um, well, let's take out our trusty calipers and figure it out. What should we be looking for um, with our calipers? Well, one thing's for sure. Um, we should be able to see that, um, uh, well, for one, the let's look at the P2P interval. So we'll come down here. Um, so there's about the more or less the P2P interval, right? And so let's look at the next sinus P wave and we, and and wait a minute, where is it? Hold on. We know that there's a nice smooth um, T wave here. Um, we can see this is the P to P interval, but there doesn't seem to be a P wave here. You, I mean, after all, you would think that there should be, you know, I should be writing a P here that blocks, and then it all starts all over again with, you know, the P, P are getting longer, and then a P here that blocks, but after, but there's no P. Okay, so. This is a very common problem. We see it all the time. People make the mistake of calling this second degree AV block, but it's not. If it was second degree AV block, where's the P that didn't conduct, right? We should have a P wave that, doesn't, that blocked, but it didn't. So how do we explain this? Well, since the P to P interval is clearly not marching through, what's the next likely diagnosis? Well, I'll tell you what this is. Um, this is a sinus beat and this is a sinus beat and if you kind of figure out uh, what's in between the next sinus beat should have fallen here but it didn't it came here okay so it's not a sinus beat it's premature so this is a PAC it's an atrial premature beat that landed on the T wave it conducted 
with a first degree AV block much longer than the underlying first degree AV block. Why? Because remember, the AV node doesn't conduct as well at um, faster rates or shorter coupling intervals because it's calcium dependent. Um, we talk about that in the, in the uh, physiology of the AV node. So this P wave was a premature atrial contraction or um, APC, whatever you want to call it, and it conducts with a first degree. And then what happens? You get a compensatory pause. And there's no other P wave in here. There's no P at all. What you get is the next sinus beat and then the next PAC. Um, okay, so you have a pattern of a sinus beat PAC, pause, compensatory pause, sinus beat PAC, compensatory pause. What do we call uh, the pattern when an ectopic beat occurs every other? It's bigeminy. I think we've seen this before. This is atrial bigeminy with a first degree AV block, but there's no second degree AV block here. All the P waves conduct. What you have is a first degree AV block, but the bigeminal pattern makes you think that it's wanky back three to two, but it's not. It's a common uh, mistake that people make, and I wanted you guys to see this. We had seen atrial bigeminy in the past that was non-conducted, but these all conduct, and it gives the appearance of a second degree AV block, but it's not. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, it was kind of fun. So remember, log on to ecgacademy.com for the um, basic ECG lessons that will take you all the way through arrhythmias, 12-lead ECGs, up to advanced stuff. In the meantime, keep watching on YouTube, and I'll keep posting videos so that I can help you become an ECG expert, too. Thanks for watching.